All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about Machine Gun Kelly on the Howard Stern show, because as expected, there are some really cringy moments. Of course, Machine Gun Kelly, he's known for doing cringy shit. And then Howard Stern, the guy hasn't left his house in like three years, and his show has declined dramatically. And I think most of the people that listen to it at this point just listen to it so that they can complain about it. If you go to any of the show's social media pages, it's mostly people just complaining. And, you know, his audience is full of boomers, mostly. So do you think these people are interested in hearing a Machine Gun Kelly interview? It's crazy. Howard Stern went from making fun of every celebrity that he brought on and asking really personal questions and making them really uncomfortable. Like most of his guests used to be nervous going on the show and sometimes people would walk off. He went from doing interviews like that to sitting there drooling on himself, listening to Machine Gun Kelly tell a story about how him and Megan Fox did ayahuasca. And it's just so funny seeing Howard Stern kiss this guy's ass because if anybody else was talking about their DMT trip or ayahuasca trip, Howard would be making fun of them. He would think they're out of their fucking mind. But Machine Gun Kelly does it and he's all interested and he's acting like this guy's saying some deep shit and this is just so cringy. Like Howard's co-host, Robin, she's done ayahuasca before and when she talked about it on the show, Howard thought she was crazy for doing it. They're all making fun of her and they just thought it was the goofiest thing ever. I learned that Life is great except for all the stuff that sucks. Wow. And everything that you had to go sucks all the way for that? is society oh, and expectations oh. and family. All of the crap we put Robin? on ourselves. Am I talking to a new Robin? <laughs> I, am, I am very, very pleasantly surprised that mm. I came home feeling great. Fred, what do you make of this? <laughs> wow, she won't drink milk. Right. But this shit she'll drink. <laughs> right. It's like fucking turpentine laced with, like, you know, well, what she, you know, it's bee like, shit. You know, she, she went and she took drugs it makes legally. Absolutely. Yeah. No sense. And she's not a drug person. Right. And now, now she's uh, going to base her whole life on this hallucination. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see anything if you get high It's unfucking believable. And I'm pretty sure ever since this, they've always kind of mocked her for going to do ayahuasca. And they always thought it was like the goofiest thing ever. Because Howard Stern, he's not into psychedelics or anything like that. Because he's pretty straight edge. And like I showed you, he usually makes fun of people for doing ayahuasca and stuff like that. But I guess when it comes to Machine Gun Kelly doing it, then he's all ears. And he's really interested in it. Like, Machine Gun Kelly, that's probably the last person I want to hear talk about their fucking ayahuasca trip. Obviously, it's going to sound pretentious as hell, but of course, we got to check it out because it's really cringy. And it's funny to watch this right after we watched him making fun of Robin for doing the same thing. He went and did ayahuasca. That's mm -hmm. a pretty fucking intense experience. Was that something worth doing? Can you actually learn something about yourself? There was this one lifetime. I'd, on the third night, I lived three lifetimes. The second lifetime that I lived... In this in this trip on the third night, was a, I was a a panhandler on the street. I was a beggar, and in my hand I had this crystal, and I kept offering it. This is the exact kind of response I'd expect from this guy when someone asks him about an ayahuasca trip he had. He starts talking about the lifetimes that he lived in crystals and shit. It's incredible that Howard can sit there and take this guy seriously. Like, does he think his audience is actually interested in this? Could you imagine a boomer sitting there listening to Machine Gun Kelly talk about his ayahuasca trip and the lives he lived and his crystals that he's trying to hand out or something? There was this one lifetime. I'd, on the third night, I lived three lifetimes. The second lifetime that I lived in this in this trip on the third night. If someone starts a story by saying this shit, I'm probably going to check out, especially if it's Machine Gun Kelly. I can't even keep track of what's going on. I'm too stupid for this story. Like, what night is it and what lifetime is he on? Is it the third night and he's on his second lifetime, I think, if I have this correctly? They couldn't see that it was a crystal. They just saw it as me with, like, a, a bowl asking for change, like, just begging. And I lived my whole life lonely and begging on the street. And I had, in my hands, love, but all they saw was a beggar well and it makes perfect sense for me to you for you to have a vision like that you had to beg your father for love in, in, in a sense you were looking for a mother and in a way as a little kid you probably felt like can't somebody give me something i'm out here begging you uh, i actually never interpreted that one i always spent time on the other ones that one i, I never thought about like that i see i mean this shit coming from howard stern is so cringy i mean coming from anybody it's cringy 
but from Howard Stern, it's on another level because this guy used to just mock everyone for this kind of shit. He used to make fun of celebrities. Whoever he brought on a show, they'd be nervous because he would just tear them apart. Now he's sitting there and trying to like analyze Machine Gun Kelly talking about his trip. And it's hilarious that after MGK told the story and Howard gives him his interpretation of it, he's just like, yeah, whatever. I didn't really think that into it. This guy went from making fun of Robin for doing ayahuasca for years to being fascinated by Machine Gun Kelly telling him about his ayahuasca trip where he's trying to give out a crystal of love. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Hey, so and Megan went too, right? Did she have a heavy experience as well? Yeah, second night is real heavy, yeah. It's really crazy to see what this show turned into. It used to be like cutting edge. Everyone was watching it. You didn't know what was going to happen. Now these interviews, they seem even worse than late night shows. Like at least late night shows have more energy than this. And it's funny because I think MGK was on Jimmy Kimmel like right before this or right after this. And he's talking about the ayahuasca story. I guess people just can't get enough of this guy talking about the trips that he had. I wonder if he told the same story or maybe he told a story about a different day where he had a different lifetime or something. I hope he at least told a different story. It's crazy. This guy goes and does ayahuasca with Megan Fox and somehow he manages to tell the most boring story ever. And I really wonder if anybody, like any Machine Gun Kelly fan watched this interview and was like, oh man, I think I'm a Howard Stern fan now. He's a good interviewer. Or if any Howard Stern fan listened to Machine Gun Kelly and is like, oh yeah, this guy seems cool. I like his music because I feel like their fan bases are so far apart. And I don't think fans of either one of them were really looking for this interview. So there's another cringy moment of this interview. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of other ones, but this one became pretty popular and people were sharing this. It was when Machine Gun Kelly did a cover of Aerials by System of a Down and people gave him a lot of shit for it because of course he didn't do the best job. And you know, this is a hard song to do. I didn't really expect much from him. And this performance, it was bad, but it's about exactly what I'd expect from him, honestly. And this is just a really hard song to do. There's no way he's gonna sound anything like the original vocals. So I just feel like this is about what I expected from him. You know, somebody tells me Machine Gun Kelly's doing a cover of a system of a down song. I don't expect much from that. Some people are acting like this is just the worst cover ever, but I've heard a lot worse. Like uh, when Puddle of Mud, that band, when they covered a Nirvana song, that was probably one of the cringiest covers of all time. I don't think you fit this too. I don't, but you have a clue. Like, come on, nothing's gonna beat that. At least MGK wasn't trying to do any experimental vocals or anything like that. He just stuck to like the only thing he can do. I think he's just like hitting one note the whole time. He was not trying to do anything crazy and his band is pretty good. So I feel like that helps a lot. So, you know, this is cringy, but I don't know if it's what people are making it out to be, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too big of a MGK fan. No, I'm kidding. I, I hate this guy's music. I'm not into it at all. Like I've always hated this emo rock stuff. Like. I can't stand any of those bands, but let's check out some of MGK's cover of Aerials, and you can tell me what you think of it. Life is So that obviously wasn't great, but I think a lot of people just hate him so much. Whatever he does, people are going to be like, what the fuck was that? That was terrible. So I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you think that was just the worst thing you've ever heard or you think people are overreacting a little bit. And you know, not everybody hated it. I know at least one person who enjoyed it. Holy shit. You got to do that in concert. That works. It's funny that this guy's a radio DJ because I feel like he doesn't even have the best taste in music. Like just the fact that he's taken MGK seriously shows that he's pretty out of touch when it comes to music. And are most MGK fans probably like people in high school, like mostly high school girls, I'd imagine. 
So it's a bunch of like high schoolers that listen to this guy and then Howard Stern, he's like a fan of him for some reason. And his kind of music, it's been done before. It's nothing original. He says he's trying to like save rock or something. And this is not the way to go about it. Like this style of music got old 20 years ago. And if you're a fan of his and you like his music, that's great. It's just not my thing. And I refuse to believe this is gonna revive rock music or do anything for rock music. All right, so that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you leave me a comment and then hit that like button, then hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.